Hello friends, my name is Bintu and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be an updated one year review of one of my most favorite electronic devices and that is my Kindle Oasis. That's right, I've had this thing for pretty much exactly one year now since I bought it back in February of 2020. It's almost like I knew we would be stuck at home. But yeah, I've had this thing for a year now. I have since read over 100 books on this device and I've read books ranging from 70 page short stories all the way to 1000 plus page epic fantasy books. I'm talking about Sanderson and King. And I can definitely start by saying that I love this device just as much as I did when I first got it. And I want to take time in this video to talk about some of the things that I've really enjoyed about it, having used it for a year and having read so much on it, some of the things that I don't care so much about, and then a wish list of things that I wish were on this device and that I hope Amazon adds to it in the future. So with that said, let's get into the video. So first, I'll just talk about uh, the device physically. This is the latest gen Kindle Oasis that is available on Amazon's website. And there isn't much to look at physically, so you'll have a single on off button at the top. There are two page turn buttons here at the side. And at the very bottom, there is in fact a micro USB connection. And this is how I charge the device and also connect to my computer. The device itself does come with a micro USB cable, but there is no wall outlet. So you have to either have your own outlet or if you have one of those, um, those power strips, I have one of those power strips that has like USB connections. So I usually just chuck it in there or I connect it to my computer to charge while I'm working. It reaches full charge pretty quickly in less than a couple hours. I have not exactly timed it because I usually have it charging in the background. Uh, while I'm doing other stuff and I'm not paying attention to it. Uh, but I've never thought like it's taking way too long to get this thing charged. It charges pretty quickly. So that's the physical overview of the device. Now let's get into some of the things that I have really enjoyed about this thing. The first, the page turn buttons. I know that page turn buttons don't seem like a huge deal. And that's what separates the Oasis from the, the regular Kindle and the Kindle Paperwhite. Neither of those have these page turn buttons. But I use these all the time. So I very rarely use my finger to swipe across to the next page. And it's a small thing, but for me, it makes a world of difference, particularly because I read for hours at a time. I don't like having to use to move my finger like this over and over and over again, it actually will eventually hurt my thumb. The other thing is the ergonomic de design that they uh, claim on this device. I do hold it pretty much just like this. And when you hold it this way, it makes it very easy to use the page turn button by just pressing on them to move forward or backward in your book. The other thing, the bigger screen. So the Oasis has a much bigger screen than either the regular Kindle or the Kindle Paperwhite. And I'm saying this as someone who came from a Kindle Paperwhite, so like I, I have had that device and I had it for many years before upgrading to the Oasis. And once you have gotten used to this bigger screen, it is a lot harder to go back to the smaller screen. And I played with the paper whites that are in the Amazon stores at the mall and stuff, just cause the newer ones are actually nicer than the one that I used to have. But even still, even though they have the flush screens, the bigger screen size on the Oasis I find is so much nicer. And for all the reasons that you would think having a bigger screen is, right? It's just, it's easier to read on and it's just, a more pleasant experience. It's kind of like getting you closer to a real book since it's fair that uh, books are the sizes of like a Kindle Paperwhite. It also means you have to turn the page less because more words can fit on a single page. Physically, this thing is also very, very light and you can kind of see me handling it pretty flimsily and that's because it is, it's extremely lightweight. Um, I've never held this thing and felt it get heavy in my hands after spending hours at a time reading. So this device in particular has is made of metal. It's got the aluminum backing whereas the others are plastic. Uh, so that makes it a little bit sturdier, which I also like. Next, the warm light. The warm light is amazing. I keep it on most of the time, whether it's day or night, just because I prefer the amber colored light. This is the only one of the Kindle devices that has a warm light. And it's one of those things where you probably don't know how awesome it is until you try it. And like I said, I keep mine pretty much always on. I think that the reason that the amber light has been so popular is that it just tends to be much easier on on the eyes, particularly if you read at night, which I do almost all of my reading at nighttime. Not necessarily in the dark, like I have lamps around, 
but but at night like before going to bed soon i don't want to be staring at blue white light it's much preferable to be staring at the amber colored light and all the rest of my favorite features are things that are just pretty general to the kindles um like across all of the devices that make having a kindle worthwhile the first thing being the fact that i have access to hundreds of books at one time so i take this device i chuck it in my backpack and anywhere I go, I can quickly take out um, the, the Kindle and I can pick from however many books I have unread on this device. That level of convenience cannot be understated. And even as someone who usually only reads one or two books at a time, it usually this is really helpful when I have finished the book and I'm getting ready to start a new one, but I haven't decided what it will be. I can kind of browse through my library and see what things I haven't read yet. And I have more choice in what I'm going to read next. I have not run into any storage issues so far on this device. I have the eight gig version and I believe I still have about five gigabytes available. And that's having about 200 books on this device so far. I don't think all of them are downloaded, so that's important to note. And I very rarely have all of my books downloaded onto this device. Usually library loans get taken away anyway. Same thing with Kindle Unlimited loans, I return them eventually. And I never keep audiobooks downloaded on here. And I'll get to more on audiobooks later. The other major point of convenience, obviously, is just the immediate download from either a public library or Amazon. I use both whenever I'm trying to get books for the Kindle device. Using the Libby app, I can get books from my public library and send them to my Kindle device from my phone in a matter of less than a minute. Or if I'm browsing on Amazon's website, I can quickly purchase the ebook and it will be automatically sent to the Kindle device. Again, this is in a matter of minutes. So if I got a book recommendation and I really want to start it right away, I can. And that's pretty awesome. And then the last two things I've really enjoyed um, having been using the kindle for the past year and again these two things are not technically unique to the kindle oasis just to the kindle devices in general um, or e-readers i like the uh, percent tracker that shows up at the bottom of the screen when i'm reading a book and it tells me i am like 60 percent of the way through the book or I have like seven minutes left in the chapter. It's a small thing, but it allows me to plan better how much more I wanna read before putting a book down. And it's just a nice progress indicator. So when you're holding a physical book, you can kind of look uh, at where your bookmark is and see how far you've gotten through the book and how much more you need to go. And you don't have that on an e-reader, but the percent tracker I find uh, functions very well as a replacement for that. I also like the filters they put on this device. So being able to filter the books that you have by read or unread by library loans um, versus purchases versus things that were from Kindle Unlimited. I mostly use the read versus unread and this allows me to quickly go through books that I haven't read yet when I'm looking to start a new book. All right, so those are all the things that I really loved about this device. And as you can tell, that was a lot of things. I, I made it no secret. I absolutely love my Kindle Oasis. If some nefarious event were to befall my Kindle, I would go out and purchase a brand new one uh, the very next day because I use it so much and I do enjoy it so much. But there are a couple of things that I don't necessarily use that much on this device and that's what I want to talk about next. The first, these devices have dark mode on them. Um, I think that's across all of the devices, but I never use the dark mode. I think I tried it out once or twice, but I didn't really enjoy it. And then I think I read somewhere that dark mode technically actually drains your battery faster than just using the regular light mode. And I would rather not use something that will drain my battery faster. It's the weirdest thing because I use dark mode um, in other devices like my cell phone, I keep in dark mode. My, my laptop settings, I try to keep those in dark mode as well. But on the actual Kindle device, I have never felt comfortable reading in dark mode on this thing. The other thing that is on here that's neat is Audible. Again, I don't use it. I have made a whole video on audiobooks on the Kindle devices. And in the end of that video, I said basically that it's a nice addition to the Kindle. However, I find it so much easier to listen to audiobooks on my phone. That's mostly because I can listen to audiobooks from various different sources, not just Audible. I can use Libby or um, or Scribd or whatever audiobook service is available. I don't have to worry about storage issues. And I mean, my phone is always connected to either Wi-Fi or cellular, so I can immediately download things um, without having access to a Wi-Fi network. So I think it's cool. However, I don't ever use it. The only way that I would use it is if they added immersion reading and that's going to be in my wish list the third thing that i haven't really tried so this device is waterproof it claims to be waterproof i'm sure it is i have never tried it and i quite honestly am not going to just 
purposely submerge my device in water. I'm gonna hope that it is in case I ever spill water on it, but I'm, I'm not gonna test that out. And, and neither should you. This is quite a pricey device. I don't think it's worth it. The other thing that I'll throw in this section is um, you'll see on my device, I have ads turned off. So I purchased this without the ads simply because I don't like the ads on, on the device. Um, I know some people don't mind it, but they were really bothering me. And I pick up this device to not be shown more advertisements. So for me, it was worth it to just pay the extra, I think $20 to get them removed. Now, whether or not they should force you to pay $20 to remove ads is a whole other story. I don't think so. You're already paying so much for the device, but it is what it is. I know a lot of people can get around this issue by ordering it with ads. And then if you call up Amazon and you ask nicely, they may remove the ads for free. I actually had that done to me with my last kindle device but this time i just paid for it all right so those are all the things that i've liked and then the things that i haven't really used so much on the kindle device i want to talk about some of my opinions on this device again having used it over the past year some of my experiences first of all i will say that i do believe that i have read more since owning the device. So this past year has been the year in which I have read more books than I've ever read in any year of my life. Now, to be fair, there were a lot of circumstances that led to that that were, that cannot be entirely attributed to the Kindle, including, you know, a worldwide lockdown, as well as the fact that I started a booktube channel. So uh, that's kind of been keeping me motivated to read more since I talk about books on this channel. I also love using Audible and I think uh, adding audiobooks to my reading has also helped me read more books in general. Another thing that I'd like to say, because sometimes people ask about this, this is an e-reading device. It is not a tablet. So I have actually a, an iPad that I use when I need something for tablet purposes, like browsing the web or watching videos. This is not that. This is basically only good for reading books. Is it expensive for a device? that is only used for reading books yeah that being said not everyone needs to get one of these i do believe that the kindle is very much a luxury device particularly the kindle oasis because it's like the top of that line there however um i read a lot of books so for me it is worth the investment but i don't think that you should buy this if you're expecting it to also double as a tablet it has a very very poor internet browser that is pretty much not really meant to be used and the last thing i'll touch on here is battery life overall i haven't had any issues with battery life I think some of these Kindle Oasis devices have had some battery life issues from some of the reviews that I had read on Amazon. That being said, I will say that uh, when I upgraded from my old Paperwhite to this Oasis, the battery on this Oasis was not as good as the battery on my Paperwhite. However, um, I think this thing has only like died on me once. And again, it's my fault, I didn't charge it. But otherwise, I have not run into an issue of my device just running out of charge uh, when I really need it to hold up. I haven't done a true battery life test on it, but I estimate I get a good at least 20 hours of battery on this thing before I need to recharge it. And again, I always keep Wi-Fi off. I don't use the Bluetooth device for very much and I don't use dark mode and I think those things help to extend the battery life when the Wi-Fi is on so when I'm downloading things you definitely see the battery draining faster all right and now my wish list what do I wish they would add to this device I think overall this is an excellent device there's only two things that I actually would like to see the first is immersion reading so immersion reading is where um, you can listen to the audiobook and it goes along with the actual ebook this is available on the Kindle app and I think the Kindle fire tablets as well but it is not available on the Kindle devices. And I hope that Amazon one day adds this to these devices because if they did, that would make the Audible feature that much better and I would actually use it. I personally love listening to the audiobook while I read books. So for me, immersion reading is a huge deal. And if they ever added it to any of their newer devices, I would pick it up immediately. And finally, this is a minor thing. I, I know some people are like up in arms about this, but it is a micro USB and not a USB-C. I like USB-C better than a micro USB. Again, not a huge deal, but if they were to add that in, I think that would be a nice addition or a nice upgrade to this current device. All right guys, that brings us to the end of this review. And just to summarize my final thoughts, again, I've made it no secret. I absolutely love my Kindle Oasis. Uh, would I repurchase this again? Absolutely. I still think, and I've had people ask this as well, I still do believe the Kindle Paperwhite is the best value for money. The, the features that you get in the Oasis 
I think that the price jump may not necessarily reflect that. That being said, if you, if it's no big deal to purchase the Oasis, I think that you would love it. It wasn't my first Kindle device, so I did start out with the Paperwhite and then got the Oasis because it is a huge jump in price, but I don't regret it. And I will continue, like if I ever upgraded, to buy the Oasis devices over the Paperwhite devices. I think I've also proven to myself that I will actually use it and get my money's worth. So there's also that. And with all that said, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.